going on guys welcome back today we're going to talk about volatility and talking about volatility is not new to my channel so basically we talked about volatility in previous videos and I created a playlist that gathers all of the videos I have created in volatility so basically you can I'm gonna put the playlist link in the description you can see four videos uh, that you can watch to learn how to use volatility framework throughout different scenarios for memory forensics specifically okay for today's video for today's video let's go back uh, this room uses volatility version 3 which is much different from volatility version 2 I'm gonna state out the differences in a bit so basically what you are going to do guys uh, you have two options either install volatility using the instructions in here or launch the attack box okay connect to the attack box and then from here I guess or this step use SSH to connect with the machine so I'm gonna use SSH now to connect with the machine on this address so from the attack box SSH THM analyst at and the password is infected okay so right now uh, go to opt and here you will find the directory that contains the volatility installation cd volatility 3 and there you go this is the file that we will be working with now technically the challenge in this task which is under task 10 the challenge comprises two scenarios or two memory dumps these memory dumps can be found under cd scenarios cd investigations and we have two memory dumps the first one is in raw format the other one is in vmem format vmem format represents a memory dump for a virtual machine could be Windows, Linux, or Mac, but just was installed on a hypervisor, just as VMware. Okay, so let's go back. So um, the these tasks are all introduction on how to use volatility. Okay, the identifying the image, the processes, the hunting capabilities, finding out hidden processes. I'm going to step right away to the challenge. Since I have done previous videos about how to use volatility, in addition, previously I created a note file to illustrate the process of memory forensics. You can find this file in mine. If you are subscribed to the channel, to the tier 2 membership, you can find this file in the uh, notes, Google Drive notes. So basically, let's go back now. So I've explained guys previously how to use volatility. Let's now step to the challenge immediately. So we have two cases. Case 1, 001, Bob, this is not a horse. And case 2, that kind of hurt my feelings. So let's start with case 1. Your SOC has informed you that they have gathered a memory dump from a quarantined endpoint. Thought to have been compromised by a banking Trojan. Okay, so we have a machine compromised by a banking Trojan. So obviously, we are talking about a bank maybe or a financial uh, institution. Now, the banking Trojan was masquerading as an Adobe document. So basically, uh, maybe the uh, operator working on the endpoint has received an attachment in PDF. Okay, they opened the attachment and their machine has got infected since. So we are talking here about Adobe document. Your job is to use your knowledge of threat intelligence and reverse engineering to perform memory forensics on the infected host. You have also been informed of a suspicious IP address in connection to the file that could be helpful. So basically, there's just saying that this uh, file, the Adobe document, might be initiating uh, communications with a C2, uh, C2 server. The C2 server address is this IP address. So this is also helpful. Okay, so what do we do? We start volatility. So case 001, the file is 
investigation dash one VMEM. The file that represents a virtual machine memory dump. So we all all the time we start with Python three the path to volatility. Okay, vol.py. Alright, so since we are using volatility 3, okay, we're not going to use, let me show you guys. So in volatility 3 or 2, we used to, let's see, yeah, so in volatility 2, we used the image info plugin, if you remember, to to just uh, predict the operating system now in volatility 3 we're gonna have to use windows info linux info or mac info depending on our knowledge about the operating system so basically the operating system was windows so in order to get details about the system the build version the build and the version we're going to use this windows info and additional thing to know about volatility version 3 is that you don't have to specify the profile every time you want to use a plugin you just use the plugin but you have to prefix the plugin name with the operating system name so if the plugin name was ps list okay and uh, the operating system was windows we're going to use windows.ps list to use the plugin as you can see here same way if i'm going to list out all the dll's using the plugin dll list i'm going to prefix the plugin name with the operating system name that I have found earlier from this plugin. As you can see from in volatility 2, we have to use the profile or assign or define the profile in every command we uh, use, as you can see, all the time. But we're lucky in volatility 3, they have made an update to that make it easier for you guys to use the plugins. So for now, windows.info. Let's see, we have an error here. Yeah. So basically, let's take a look. Yeah, we haven't, uh, let's clear. We haven't specified the file, the memory dump file, dash f, using dash f, and then here, investigation. Um, this is something, okay, ls. So dash f the investigation file name is this. Okay, and here we get the details about the operating system. So the details start from here. The kernel base, the symbol file. And we see the build version as you can see. This is the build version. The machine time, the processor, the system time is also important. This indicates the time at which the memory was extracted from the target host or the target operating system. That's the root file system. And this is the timestamp. Okay. Now, this, the build version represents or gives you the first answer to the question. What's the build version of the host machine? At what time was the memory file acquired in case 001? This is the time. Okay, proceeding to the next question. What process can be considered suspicious in case 001? So here we have to list all the processes. So we go back. As you can see, guys, as you can see here, I'm only specifying the file name. Okay, and then I type the operating system Windows dot PS list the plugin name. Okay, so it's clearly the suspicious process is this the reader underscore SL. Why? It's given already that the machine was infected using an Adobe document. So it's pretty obvious that the uh, respective malicious process that will be launched is reader the adobe reader what's the parent process of the suspicious process in case 001 so this process has a parent okay as you can see 
the parent ID, PID is 1484 and the PID of the process is 1640. So I have to find out the parent's PID, the parent process whose PID is 1484. To find the parent process, we have to use PS3. PS3 is a plugin that lists all of their processes and their parent process. So as you can see, this is our process and the parent, let's see, 1640 and the parent process PID is this, which happens to be the explorer. What's the PID of the suspicious process? We already mentioned that guys, it is 1640 and the parent PID is 1484. What user agent was employed by the adversary in case 001? This one was a bit tough, but here the question is about extracting artifacts or indicators of compromise. So the user agent, okay, uh, IP addresses, domain names, hashes are all indicators of compromise. In order to find these, okay, we have to dig deeper into the process in question. This means we have to map or list the memory pages of this process. This will give us a hex view, a binary view as well, of the memory pages. The memory pages contain a wealth and a plethora of information about everything that the process did since it started in the operating system. So we're going to use the memory map plugin to do that. So let me search for memmap. Okay, so Windows memmap dot memmap, and then we specify the PID of the process, and then dash dash dump. Okay, so again, Windows memmap memmap dash dash PID. The PID is 1640. Okay. And then we have to specify where to dump the memory pages. So basically the memory pages will be dumped to a directory that we will specify. It's going to be under temp dash dash dump. Dash O, forgot the dash O. Let me see. So it seems like here in the comment I forgot to add something which is a directory where the memory pages will be dumped. Here, directory. And there, we're going to add this earlier in the command. So basically, here, dash o temp. Still, this is not working. Unrecognized arguments. Dash o output directory. How about we put this earlier here? Okay, now it worked. So you have to specify this very early in the command. As you can see, the memory pages are being dumped right now. And the, file, the, the name of the file, or the file is given, the, the file's name are given the following format. The PID, if the PID, the process, PID, and then dot, DMP. This indicates that uh, these are the memory pages uh, of this process 1640. Now you may be wondering how we are going to interpret and get deeper into these pages. No worries. We're going to use a combination of strings and grip to grab what we're looking for. So basically we now know that all of these memory pages 
uh, the, the names of which end with .dmp extension. So if you are going to search through these names, through these memory pages, we're going to specify the .dmp extension. So let's say strings temp So this command will output all of the strings, okay, inside these files, all of these files. Since I have defined asterisks here, it's going to look for all or go through all of these uh, memory pages. And it's going to dump these strings. But this will be a very long, overwhelming output. We're going to use grep here and look for a pattern. Look for a pattern. Since we are tasked to find the user agent, we're going to use the word user agent. Nothing. How about use this? Okay. So when I typed agent, I found these. But I haven't found user agent. Let's try user. So we have many strings that contain the word user. But for some reason, I cannot extract the user agent. Let's see here. dump okay let's use dash i option ah this now now it works so i have to put the dash i option here as you can see we have extracted the user agent and this is agent represents one of the artifacts let me say of the compromise now, was Chase Bank one of the suspicious bank domains found in case 001? Again, we are extracting the, art, uh, the artifacts and IOCs. So to find these, we are still uh, in need to look into the memory pages. So instead of looking for a pattern of user agents, since we are tasked or we're asked to find uh, the domain name, so basically we're going to use HTTP maybe, What's gonna be a long output, I guess. Yeah, so many things in here. We're given the name of the bank, Chase, so how about we type Chase here? And we see some patterns. Chase online. Chase online. So yes, the bank name was found here so was chains bank one of the suspicious bank domains found in case 001 yes so it looks it looks uh, like guys the uh, the attacker has sent the victim a link to a fake banking page where the victim downloaded the adobe document from this domain so this domain represents an indicator of compromise if you are analyzing or using this for threat intelligence, you're going to take this domain, reverse uh, look up this domain, extract the IP address, and then insert this into your uh, firewall or, some, or, or another IDS machine that you are using. Okay, so that's for case 001. Let's now step to case 002. Clear. So case 002, the file is in raw format. So let's construct first the volatility command. So this one will be row windows.info. File doesn't exist. Investigation dash, yeah. So it's two. Okay. Starting. What suspicious process is running at PID 740 in case 002? So let's list out all of the processes. PS list. 
Now try to find the suspicious process guide without paying attention to the PID given. So if you look at the list here, we see one of the crypto. One of the crypto is a very prominent process name for the wanna cry ransomware. So it's very clear that this is the answer. What's the no, what's the full path of the suspicious binary in PID 740? So the question here is to find the suspicious executable file connected to this process. The only way to find this is to list out all of the DLLs. So DLL list dash dash PID. The PID is 740. Scrolling up the first line the first line contains, as you can see, the process base and the file. This is the, the file or the executable file that once launched will start this process. And this is the answer. What's the parent process of PID 740 in case 002? The parent process. Okay, so, so what we're going to do here, we're going to use PS3. So the parent process has the PID of 1940. This happens to be the task scheduler. What's the suspicious parent PID? Yeah, it's here. From our current information, what malware is present on the system in case 002? So based on these two answers, it's very clear indication that the malware is one cry ransomware. What DLL is loaded by the decryptor used for socket creation? This was this one was a bit tough and required a bit of research. So what I did first, I was trying to find this DLL by listing out the DLLs of this process whose PID was 740. So DLL list. And I was presented with a lot of DLLs, some of which I know the functionality and some of which I don't. Let's scroll down. So as you can see, it starts from here. The DLLs up. Yeah. So these are the DLLs. It's very clear that it's not anti DLL. These are system DLLs, right? It's not user. It could be MFC, it could be this. Obviously, you will not be able to memorize the functionality of every single one of the DLLs, right? Unless you spend your day analyzing malwares, which in my case, I am not. So basically what I did, guys, I started researching about WannaCry. So WannaCry ransomware, and I typed socket DLL to find out what are the DLLs that WannaCry ransomware used to open sockets. So I found this report uh, in this link, blocksblackberry.com. And in here, the author or the authors have done a great job analyzing the WannaCry ransomware using reverse engineering. So without looking into all of this, I just searched for the word DLL. So, WannaCry is highly modular in composition, comprising the following components. So we have warm payload, loader DLL. We have the Wanna, you have the ransomware payload, DLL as well, but it's encrypted. And let's see here. So if the remote machine is already infected with double pulsar, then it's leveraged to transfer the launcher DLL. Okay, not here. Launcher DLL, not this one. We need to find the socket DLL. So we have several DLLs here. The complete list of dropped files as follows. Not socket DLLs. We have then the decryptor DLL, which is not the one we are looking for. This one is the ransomware 
decrypt her DLL. We don't want this. Other DLLs we might be looking for. Let's see. Yeah. As you can see, we have these. WS2 underscore 32. Connect, send, receive. It's very clear that this DLL was used or was loaded to open sockets. And it is listed here. If you see, if you look again, as you can see, this DLL is found in the list of the DLLs loaded by the ransomware. So that's your answer. What mutex can be found that's a known indicator of the malware in question? Again, you can find the answer of this using research, but let me tell you how to list out the mutexes. So basically we use the plugin handles. Handles is the plugin used to list out all of the open files uh, by the malware and it gives you the mutexes so as you can see we have many mutants here right and with every mutant we have different mutex scrolling up to find the right one what you have to do again you have to research so there is this report again by mandiant if we tap mutex as you can see, it gives you the mutex that's in question. Let's take a look here, if you can find this mutex in the list. So it is wind zones cache counter. Where is my mutex? So we couldn't find it using the handles, but anyway, you can you can find this from the research. And the last question: What plugin could be used to identify all files loaded from the malware working in direct work? Are what <laughs> loaded from the malware working directory? So at first, I thought it was handles. Because handles shows you the open files, but it was file scan, which is another plugin you can use to show the files loaded by the malware. So guys, that was it. I hope you enjoyed the challenge and I will definitely see you in the next video.